Abraham and Sarah, the great heroes of faith. We give them this title because in Genesis chapter 12, God show up, shows up in their life and says, if you leave your country behind and, and your family and, and everything else and go to the land that I will show you, I will make you a blessing and your descendant will form a great nation. So up they go and they follow the Lord. And on chapter 18, several years after, we discovered, their, the, we discovered them somehow the equivalent of migrant population these days. Alien in a stranger land, and most importantly, no offspring have shown up. And one day, three strangers showed up. <coughs> Sorry, three strangers shows up, and the text lead us to understand that one of them was God. But Abraham, not knowing that, uh, invite them and show them all the hospitality uh, usual in the ancient Near East. And then one said, well, I will return in due time. I will return next year. And your wife will have a son. Sarah, who heard this statement, began to laugh. And it was not a laugh of joy or relief, but it was more cynical. Uh, she knew. She knew that the age to, she passed the age to have children. You know, it was a question of basic biology. The facts are facts. So she laughed. And the Lord asked Sarah, did you laugh? And she said, no. She said something like, no, 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 no. I did not laugh when I heard maybe one of the stupid things ever said. Of course, yeah, sure, I will have an offspring next year, yes, yes. My husband is old, probably too old to do what need to be done, and I can't I pass, I'm too old to have children, and, and the promise made all those years ago never materialized, but yeah, sure, I will have a son, yes, of course. And replies is anything too wonderful for the lord god asked and on that day sarah probably believed yes <laughs> but we read the text and we discover that sarah actually have a son and as people across the century have read this text and put it with another passage from the gospel that says ask and you shall receive well people said well you need to pray you need to pray, 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 and pray until something shows up. You, you need to have faith, a very solid faith, and you will see your prayers, your demand will be answered if your faith is true, if your faith is genuine. And it seems great, but what happens when our prayers are not answers? What do we tell people? How should a spouse, someone react when his or her spouse is not healed, when the family has and it's admits an addict that keep failing and failing and failing, when a couple who have faith and do everything they should do still cannot have a child of their own. This can be a very problematic text for many people and maybe a way to solve this is to refrain of giving too much importance on the result. Is our prayer answered or not? Do we have what we ask or not? Because through all Abraham and Sarah's tribulation and trials and years of disappointments, one fact remain. God never left. God never forgot them. Yes, there were obstacles. Yes, there were moments when Abraham and, in this case, Sarah, had difficulty to believe in the promise 
Nevertheless, God still remained present. And they were transformed through this journey. They were transformed because they were ready to be open. And that's for us too. We pray for transformation. We pray for something. And it's the goal is not necessarily to have exactly what we want, but to be transformed through how the meeting of stranger, through all the signs around us, through a succession of events, unplanned events. And sometimes we discover through all of these that we are in a relationship with a God who dares to mingle in our lives and are still active despite all our cynicism, despite all our skepticism. God change us, God transform us and lead us somewhere else, make us different being. And I hope you will discover this, how this journey with God change us. Not necessarily exactly what we ask for, but in so many ways. And until then, and until next time we talk to other, I remain Reverend Stéphane Vermette. I'm the lectionary man. Take care of yourself, and bye-bye.